Hello, welcome to the CLG FTC YouTube page. I'm Ramola. Today I want to talk about Frosty Faustings 15, which just happened. Frosty Faustings has always been like a super big gear tournament for as long as I remember. It's basically one of the main three that everyone goes to with like Combo Breaker and Siotaku. And with Strive, it's been no different. This gear was super packed, had I think over a thousand entrants, which is crazy. There was a lot of international competition that showed up. Uh, Jiro, I believe, Zondo, Leffen, and of course, course slash and chief like how it kind of turned out was not what a lot of people were expecting so I feel like this is a really good one to kind of go over uh, just for a little bit of hindsight in North America most people believe that like one of two players is basically gonna win this it was Unisho or Nubenheimer basically those two have been the most dominant by far online uh which is of course where most people run their brackets currently because we are still in a pandemic um with not as many offline events that people are going to most people are using online so usually those two are the most dominant with there's always some also some great players that are considered like definitely like it would not be a shock if they like win for example like Tempest, Jonathan Tene, one CEO, Brazo as well, Bean, uh, Hotashi like a lot of great players that, uh, you know, they may not be like the first choice to win, but they're definitely up there. Like they would, it's one to like 1.5 sort of deal. So let's move over here, check out the bracket. So you can see here, actually there was a really early upset with Jiro, who again, like Jiro, one of the best Anji players in the world, if not the best, drowned a little early in, in top 49. Most people I think were expecting a top eight from Jiro. I'm always super empathetic to international competition who comes through because it's always super hard to adjust to different time zones and stuff before tournaments. So I'm super empathetic. Uh, I don't know what it was, but uh, unfortunately a lot of these matches were not on stream either. Frosty is a two day event. So it, it sometimes like a lot of matches were not streamed. So I think that's also a good reason why we should go over it, kind of talk about it a little bit. In fact, like in 33rd here, you can see uh, LK, Days, both you know fantastic players just a sign of how wild the competition was here because these two players are obscenely good and it should tell you a lot oh, and lost soul as well up here very telling how wild the competition is and you know these players definitely again like they would be contenders to win just didn't work out it's also same thing with like kizzy here right in fact you can almost see i'm going to scroll up a little bit da, da, da. there's a was a bit of an upset early actually with uh, Umisho. So Umisho got 25th. Uh, I don't know who she lost to in losers, but on winner's side, she lost to Ui Gooey Chewy Snicker, the Anji player, which fantastic name, by the way. Uh, unfortunately, was not streamed, so we just have a little bit of shaky cam footage. Uh, this did say she played only soul but she as you can see also played happy chaos not on the stream though i don't i don't think so uh super good showing from from ui gooey this dude's sick if you ever want to watch some sick anji play you should definitely watch the video or if you need to like find out how to fight against happy chaos i mean clearly this this dude this dude's got something going for him i actually don't even know where this anji plays um but here's also someone we mentioned Oh, there he is, uh, or they are, sorry. Ooey gooey chewy snicker. Solstice, as I mentioned, super strong. Flash Metroid, I haven't seen for a super long time, but you know, obviously super strong. Memocarp as well. Cory, I actually hadn't seen, I don't think at all before, at least I don't quite remember, but um, their performance super good over the weekend and honestly very big uh, props to being able to accomplish as much as they have because it was super good and I, I had not heard of them really. And of course Marbello, friend of the stream, you already know Marbello, lot, very uh, common sight in the CLG Renit brackets, super strong player and again 25th, so again shows you how f***ing stacked this event is, right? This is actually kind of, it's starting to get pretty wild. Uh, SQ, who's, you know, always in top eights, no exceptions, basically, in any bracket on land. Zondo, who's an extremely strong player, right? Won, like, I think quite a few tournaments in EMEA, not 100% sure on which. A Rat, who's been doing very well. I like their name, too. Shout outs to, to Rat. <laughs> and Hotashi. Hotashi with uh, Nago and Bridget. So I think Hotashi's actually thinking more of swapping towards Bridget. Or maybe he just enjoys playing her more. I'm not sure. But uh, either way, cool to see him playing with uh, playing Bridget. Then you can see for 13th, it was uh, Nitro, Jacko, super strong player for us. Rocks, uh, who I, I don't think I had seen before, but again, super strong showing and, and was super impressive. See, a lot of Bridget players kind of showing up in higher placings because Bridget was not really a common sight before this patch, right? Like, most people considered her very, very bad. In fact, I consider her probably the worst character in the game last patch, in, in my opinion. The change is, I guess, like helping kind of stabilize her a bit, also very cool to see that you're, you're really seeing it in, 
in bracket as well. Razo, who Big Shadows also played Anji, which oh, that's f***ing sick. I love that. Again, Razo, one of the contenders to you know, always win bracket. In fact, like one of the things I think they're most consistent at is they're usually one of the best at fighting Happy Chaos obviously doing to, to some history. <laughs> They're really, really good at, at uh, Happy Chaos and definitely in quite a few matchups as well, but I think, I don't know if they're super comfortable with uh, every matchup, but they're just playing more Anji, but uh, obviously Razo, super strong, and just a sight, again, how f***ing wild this bracket was, right? MFCR, big shout outs to MFCR, super good play uh, showing, really impressed me. I, I've played MFCR a bit in the past, and it really, like, watching them play, I was super impressed. Uh, Leffen got ninth. I feel like I don't even need to, I don't even do need to do it. Obviously, Leffen's super good. Picked up Happy Chaos too. Not super sure how much Leffen had been practicing stuff. So like either way, ninth is, is pretty impressive. Again, I'm always super empathetic to international competition. Same with like again, reference for Zondo here is a lot of North Americans really underestimate how bad jet lag and stuff like that is. So uh performing even this high up, like like 17th or 9th or whatever is exceptional to me. I think that's so incredible. Top 8. You can see we had Adventure on Jacko. Adventure always a, a staple. A super good player. I think really the defining player for Jacko for a long time. I don't know how Jacko's matchups are now. I'm I'm a little unfamiliar with them, but I think in general, Jacko is of course good, but it's a sign that like Adventure is just a good ass player, you know? And same with like right above him is uh, Diaphone, who, you know, again, just a good ass player who definitely needs no recognition dude wins every tournament that he pretty much enters <laughs> almost online i i almost i'm always waiting for the diaphone video upload you know where he's like i won this this tournament with my new character <laughs> And again, like like I said with Bridget, not a lot of representation for Bridget prior. Diaphone's been doing a lot of work, kind of like spearheading, like kind of how to get people into playing Bridget, like what to look for, how to play her, stuff like that. Uh, and of course, here's like a bit of an upset. This was the only real, I guess like downside, or I, I shouldn't say real downside, but I guess like I negative, uh, negative, I guess, blotch on the competition was you can actually see Latif actually ended up beating uh, Nubenheimer. It was a very close set, but unfortunately, what happened was, yeah, <laughs> it was a it was a set that kind of got interrupted. And I think a lot of people were really hoping for Nubenheimer and Latif to play again. Unfortunately, uh, they didn't. I think Nubenheimer lost in losers immediately after, which uh, you know sucks a lot because Nubenheimer, super strong player, I respect him a ton. Uh, very smart. Uh, I love the way they approach Naga too, but you know, always hard to come back from stuff like this. I think that was really like the only like, oh, that kind of sucks kind of moment. Because again, like, you know, Latif, extremely exceptional. Nuvenheimer, of course, one of the people considered the best to ever, like, to really take this, right? So always sucks to see that. Uh, unfortunately, when this happens, a lot of people misunderstand this. I want to kind of clear this up. Basically, they force the other player to take a game to prevent people from kind of like being guilted around it or whatever and it's, it's just the rules you know and it's it's hard to really handle stuff like this but usually they'll never like ask to replay it they'll just be like you know oh player two's controller disconnected player one automatically gets to win they don't get a choice in it whatsoever which you know again it sucks but it's it's hard to have a system like this right of course jonathan penne like i mentioned super strong player super smart uh played <laughs> played leo i don't know why I didn't even know they had a Leo, but there's Zada, of course, super good. Think very highly of of, uh, of Jay Nasty, as always. Awesome dude. Of course, fourth is Slash. Super strong showing. Really consistent from Slash. I like he's always had super good performances. I feel like here, let's actually we can move up here and also we can look at a little of who beat who uh, in the bracket. But uh, for top eight, you can actually see Slash beat Diaphone, Aaron Demac, uh, who we haven't gotten to yet. Uh, a little bit of a of a sleeper in in my opinion. You can see Slash beat Jay Nasty in losers. Aaron Demac beats uh, Neuenheimer as well, and you can see also Jay Nasty. We lost the Tempest and winners. Tempest, uh, we haven't even got to yet because he's here. Little spoilers. Look away. Block, block this out from your, from your monitor. <laughs> Slash super strong player, super consistent, and the level of players that he like really runs over is a definitely an indicator of how fantastic of a player he is and super smart, like I said. Uh, next, Aaron Demac. Aaron Demac, I actually want to spend some time talking about because Aaron Demac had a great showing this bracket. In fact, you can see, uh, I'm in the way. Basically, Latif uh, ended up being. Aaron Demac after Tempest and, and Aaron Demac ended up going I think three yeah three two I think a lot of people weren't really sl were, were sleeping on Aaron Demac 
and we're like, you know, like, I, I wouldn't say, like, necessarily Aaron was ever considered a bad player. Like, I've obvious, I've heard of them, and they've been considered super good for a long time. But I don't think they were on anybody's radar to be like, oh, dominant performance from, from them, you know what I mean? And I think they, they'd swapped to Happy Kill somewhat recently. They had a very strong Leo. I was actually very impressed by their Leo. I was almost like, damn, I, I want to see more of their Leo. <laughs> but a uh, super strong performance. They were exceptional. Uh, and I think really shocked a lot of people with like some of their wins. Because like, like I said, they beat, you know, Nubenheimer, again, super strong. Beat Slash, again, super strong. I emphasize, you know, like they're they're more notable than a lot of people gave them credit for. And I think that's, that's always awesome, right? That's always so cool. Of course, second Latif. Definitely, you know, one of the best, Zot the, the, I would just, you know, we'll, we'll say the number one Zotto. Super good, super smart, played a long time. Uh, and again, it's always impressive to me, again, also with Slash, like, again, being able to perform at this level, also fighting like jet lag and like all this other stuff you have to deal with. It's super impressive and huge indicators of their skill. Next is, I would say, of course, uh, I guess next, there's no one left. There's Tempest. Tempest. Interesting. I actually would never have guessed Tempest would have won this. It's precisely because of the fact that I think usually the te brackets Tempest used to win were ones that usually like kind of the bad matchups gets like sweeped by happy chaos or someone else and then they play like umi show or something and they just they win like they're they've always been known for having a great history against umi show like one of the best performers against umi show i think they won combo breaker i believe so i mean like it's a very good showing i would have never expected it to work the way the way it did though because mo i don't think they didn't even play a happy chaos right yeah they played uh, j nasty which is uh zato play the Thief, Zotto, and then play the Thief, Zotto. And that's basically, it was basically a lot of Zotto and uh, different players too playing playing Zotto. So, I mean, even if it's just Latif and Jay Nasty, they both approach the character differently. I think that's a sign of a very strong player if they can adapt to how a character like that can be played. Zotto can be approached in very many different ways that are, you know, very player dependent. And I think it's a good indicator of how good Tempest is to be able to be as dominant, especially with a bracket of this size. Like again, like a lot of people hyper focus on top eight, but like I really want people to give props, like, you know, even top 49. I mean, you gotta remember, this is a thousand player bracket. That's that's a lot. So just to kind of go over some of the numbers. So, so some of my favorite players who I was kind of thinking of was, I think very highly of Darkrai. Darkrai, uh, as we saw, got ninth. Yeah, Darkrai had gotten into losers from top 192. Darkrai had lost to Rat. Again, big shout outs to Rat, sickening, but also as you can see, incredibly play. And you can see they beat Diaphone. It's whew, woo Nally, right? <laughs> uh, Diaphone, I also would have assumed. I think Diaphone being one of the pioneers of how to approach Bridget was also a good indicator of like, you know, not a lot of people are really, like Bridget's not on a ton of people's radar yet. I don't know how strong she is, but ultimately I think a lot of the stuff Diaphone's been doing to find strategies and stuff is a good sign of like, you know, he's 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 good at knowledge checking you and he's fundamentally good. So, I mean, that's a good sign. In fact, you can even see here, Solstice actually lost to Darkrai. Uh, it was actually, oh, in fact, Darkrai eliminated Razo too. It was actually Aaron DeMac with the Maki avatar uh, <laughs> beats beats Darkrai. So that's that's very impressive. Another player I want to shout out also, uh, besides Adventure, is actually Stealthy. Stealthy had a really good performance. And I think, again, not a lot of people are really expecting it. As you can see, like Stealthy actually beat Slash in winners. It was only uh, Stealthy versus Tempest where Stealthy actually lost and unfortunately didn't make top eight because of it. That's like the worst feeling. Such a big win against like Slash into playing uh, Tempest and Adventure, who are like both players who absolutely could win the tournament too, right? I know the feeling. Oh, I see in Losers, actually, Umisho lost to Bean. Bean is always someone I think very highly of. Again, they were a contender for me to pick. I actually would have assumed Zondo would have made top eight as well. But unfortunately, little slash, uh, slash watch. This is like one of the worst feelings in international brackets too, is when to make top eight or towards top eight, you have to play someone you play a lot, which both happen to, I assume Slash and Zondo play a lot. Slash played Zondo and then for top eight, Leffen played Slash. So that's kind of cursed. I mean, obviously I would have expected Nubenheimer super strong in every way. I can, cannot stress that enough. I would have assumed a Latif. Uh, I don't want to keep adding people because I'm going to forget how many I've added and I'm going to go over it and then there's going to be a YouTube comment that's like, oh, Kality can't count. I can't. I wasn't paying attention to how many I've added. The point is there's more players <laughs> that could definitely win the tournament that can even fit in top eight. 
I think that's a really good sign for the bracket. It's a very good sign of like, I mean, again, just how stacked this tournament is. Oh, we can actually show the battle log. I could have pressed this. Shout outs to event hubs for this. This, this could have saved me a lot of work. Very good showing from almost everybody. I don't know why I said almost everybody. Everyone did good. Super strong showing from everyone involved. I really enjoyed this event and it was very, I think, a little bit of a shock for a lot of people how these brackets turned out. Even though it was kind of expected the way that it would go, like in terms of how everything turned out. I think a lot of people are like, you know, what if Nubenheimer got to have that last set against Latif, right? I'm wondering it. I would love to see them play again. I think it'd be very cool. Would the result change? Who knows? I mean, Latif and Nubenheimer are both gods. So, you know, either way, it's like, it, it's one of those things I think could, could have gone either way. Super cool event. And again, I really want to recommend if you are an Anji player, definitely check out Ui Gui Chewy Snicker because this dude's rad as hell. I think they were the the highest placing Anji. I mean, the only Anji player, like the highest placing only Anji. You know what I mean? That's 17. So big shout out to them. And tied with some, again, juggernauts like, you know, SQ, Zondo, Rat, who, you know, not super well known, but I think a lot of their wins kind of show how good they are, right? I think it's a very good time for competitive guilty gear, which I think we're at a point where like the level is so high and there's a lot to kind of learn from each tournament and there's a lot to figure it out. And I really like that. And I think the fact that competition is so tight also makes it very interesting to kind of look back on it and talk about like this. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot. Subscribe and you know comment on the CLG FTC YouTube page if you, if you want. If you like my video, just type P instead of doing a thumbs up emoji. I like that. Anyways, <laughs> thanks so much. Bye bye.